I am just watching all the beauty. <laughs> you look so beautiful at the airport, it's such a joy for me to see you in that shape. It's a rare occasion sometimes that you feel oneness with the whole universe, absolutely oneness with the whole universe, when you feel the love that exists between all of you. It's the love between you, oneness between you, the way you all have opened your heart to each other. As good human beings, as realized souls, as saints, is the most fulfilling and satisfying thing for me. When a saint used to meet another saint, say in India, what would happen? There was a saint in Maharashtra who was a tailor, but he was a saint. Saint is a saint, whether he is a tailor or he could be anything. And there was another saint who was a potter, who used to make pots and things like that out of clay. So this saint, Namadeva, went to see this potter who was making some pots out of clay and he looked at him and the feeling that came into his heart, he's expressed he was a great poet also, Namadeva, so he says, In Marathi it is, but I'll translate it in English. I came here to see the Chaitanya, the formless, but the formless is standing before me in the form. So to appreciate the other saint. He said, now the whole Chaitanya, the whole all-pervading power of God's love has come in your form before me. I see it. How to address? Just think of it. And that moment, spontaneously he said this. That is how we are all saints. And saints have to see that, that you are the form of that love of God's all-pervading power. You are in the form of that, all of you. I think that day you were standing in the rain and sleet with all your children. For a mother it's too much to see such beautiful feelings for me. But the feelings among yourselves, the open-heartedness, the pure love, that filled the whole atmosphere with such beauty. It's not just talking. It's not just uh, writing letters or sending birthday cards or something like that. 
is from the heart. We have to feel each other that you are all saints. You are different people. You have to support each other. You have to look after each other. You have to understand each other because you are people of a different awareness, living among people who are blind, who can hit you, he can do some harm to you. <coughs> the other day I was reading Ganeshwara. Can you imagine? He died at the age of 23 years. At such a young age as 23 years. And the Ganeshwari he wrote was at the age of 21 years. And what a genius. I mean, you read it, uh, you just don't understand. How could he penetrate so deep? He described you all. As I have told you many a times, he has described you as the oceans of, the walking oceans of Amros, Ambrosia, talking trees and the forests of the trees of bliss and beautitude. That wherever you will go, you will bless people. Wherever you stand, you will be auspicious. You will create harmony, peace and joy. That's your work, that's your style, that's what you are here for. But beware. You have to be very careful because the surroundings seem to be quite deceptive and quite troublesome. And from that surrounding you are coming out suddenly <coughs> into a new surrounding where you have known what is divine love, what is divinity. One has to be very careful because the forces that are negative are very strong and working at you all the time. Because you have come from matter, you have evolved from matter and it's easy to go to matter, to materialism to the materialistic ideas. And this materialism takes you to primitiveness. All your culture, all your beauty will drop out as soon as you take to materialism. If everything becomes money, there's no place for God, no place for love. no place for beauty or for any graciousness. Money is for us, we are not for the money. Money should be at our command. We don't have to give up anything for that. And here there we see the materialism coming up in a very different way, very subtle ways, and we do not see it. When we start saying, my mind, this is mine, then you are slowly drifting towards materialism. When you see yourself in the collective, That's the only way you can get out of materialism because you are in reality a collective being. You are 
not an individual that way. But the matter divides you from each other. And when you realize that we are not slaves of matter, matter is our slave. We are not going to be dominated by any matter. Then you can feel that love. One goes to absurd limits if you take to materialism, and everything can be explained in the name of materialism. But in the name of divine, how far can you go and explain? You have to just enjoy it. When you enjoy, you don't want to explain or talk about it, you just want to enjoy. Divinity is to be enjoyed within and without. It's within you. Divinity is within you, but is to be enjoyed. That's only possible if you understand that you are not going to be dominated by any matter whatsoever. I'm sorry I'm here for such a short time. I wish I could be with you forever, which I am, I think. <laughs> But you have brothers and sisters everywhere. The whole world has this message with them. You, some of you have met them in India. All the Indians have sent their love to you, lots of love. And they didn't know what to send you from there, something special, so they sent me. <laughs> Sometimes I feel all of us should meet somewhere, all of us from all over the world, from every corner of the world, all the great saints who are in these modern times should meet each other, talk to each other, enjoy each other and understand each other. That's the time we'll think that a new era has started of love, of trust, of enjoyment of other human beings. When you start enjoying another person, then only we can say that you are in the collective. Like my finger, if it pains, the another one tries to soothe it, and I feel the soothing without feeling any gratitude or without feeling any sort of an obligation. So always I say about collectivity, those who cannot be collective, those who cannot open their hearts, those who keep aloof, those who think they are, some of them might be thinking we are great Sajogis because we are very old Sajogis, some might be thinking we are very intelligent, some that we are rich and poor and all that. All these differences should disappear. Who is crying? She's crying? What's the matter? Clapping made him jump. Clapping made the baby jump. Oh. One day they'll all grow up. I was thinking when they'll grow up, they'll clap much more than you will do. <laughs> Little more time we need, somehow. All these great people will be becoming great Sajogis and will give us such a pleasure, such a joy, such a happiness. Today I wanted to speak about something, but I'll just put it as a question to you all and I would like to have an answer from you. Uh, you can write to me, or let's see, or you can discuss. That has formerly 
as other saints have said, that once you get your realization, you are lost. You can't speak about it. You can just tell them by some similes, metaphors, this, that, but you cannot really give them the experience by telling them. And that's why many saints decided that after Realization it's better to disappear. Even Ganeshwara took his samadhi, he went into a room and he died in that room. Because they could not say much about it, they could not tell much about it. But today that's not the situation. Like Kabira has said that when a drop becomes the ocean, what can you say? You are lost, you are no more there, you are all finished. So what has happened in Sahaja Yoga, today's Sahaja Yoga, that we are all talking about it, experiencing it and enjoying it? That's the question for all the Sahaja Yogis to solve. Eliot, you can explain? Did you hear my question? No? You didn't hear my question? You see, what I said was that formerly those people who got Realization got lost, right? As you were lost just now into thoughtless awareness. <laughs> But you can come back and you can tell people, you can talk about it and many people disappeared. Uh, actually, they didn't want to live after getting Realization for a long time because they could not explain, talk to people about it. Also, they said that, how can a no tongue tell about the taste of the jaggery, as a kind of a sweet. So there was a problem with them. All of them had a problem. But now you don't have that problem. So what has happened in Sahaja Yoga that you have no problem? So think it over and write to me, all right? So. I don't know what to say anymore. <laughs> Just we are enjoying our rapport with each other, isn't it? <laughs> That's all sitting down here. Uh, anybody has any questions? Anybody who is a new person can ask a question? Would be a good idea. Because these people have no questions now. Ask me a question. I've heard the good news. Ah. How can we? How should we approach the spreading of Sahaja Yoga to, to new people? What? He said, how should we approach the spreading of Sahaja Yoga to To them. Now, you see, you will meet three types of new people. Firstly, those who are yogis, or you can call them as people of previous birth, who are already very knowledgeable and are there. Just they can feel it. This is it. You won't have much problem with them. They'll know it is so. To them it's very obvious and you'd be amazed the way they are there, how they have taken to it so easily. <clears throat> now the second type are the people who may be still believing, non-believing, maybe some who are doubting, 
maybe or maybe some who are asking questions about it quite a lot so is not sufficient only for you to get your realization also not sufficient for you that you feel the vibrations so that you can give realizations to other that won't help much you have to know how to deal with various types of people like i would say a person who is a say a priest who comes to you and wants to talk to you about god they start and all so you must know bible very well i know bible in the way a sir jogi should know the other day rustam telephoned to tell me that i told him to study quran because i said islam means surrender but before realization surrender has no meaning and he told me that it's written in quran that unless and until you are connected with god you cannot understand anything what is written here it's clearly said Now, when the Muslims talk to you, you can tell them this is written in Quran. Are you connected with God? Now they might say, "Are you connected?" Now, then, if you say yes, then finished. <laughs> <laughs> then Mr. Ego will come up, you see, suddenly, and you be careful. So this subject should be treated with a barge pole. like uh, <laughs> such a question if they ask is it they will be like that are you that like in the beginning they used to ask me what's your father what's your mother who are you this that all those things you say so at that time you have to give an answer to them uh can you give this lady a chair to sit down what's up no और बस आ बस सो सच अ क्वेश्चन इफ यू आंसर इन दैट मैनर यू हैव नॉट बीन क्लेवर इन अफ यू हैव टू बी वेरी क्लेवर देन यू शुड से सी देर आर अवॉइड द सब्जेक्ट don't answer you just say ki there are descriptions about a person who is a realized soul jung has said that you have to become collectively conscious now what is collectively conscious that is on your central nervous system you should be able to feel another person now jung has said so it's a point then you have got other people to quote william blake you can quote you can quote other poets or saints whom you know it depends on what sort of a person you are dealing with but just don't say yes i am a realized soul people have been crucified murdered poisoned for saying that so be careful put it on somebody else and say yes uh the signs of a realized soul are like this that he has to be collectively conscious first of all that you have read you or you know so much about collective consciousness itself will put them right in their own places to begin with because you have to be knowledgeable in these modern times and you should be able to communicate just by telling them i am realized so i have to awaken your kundalini nobody is going to believe even in india people don't believe that we can give realization or well, they know about realization they know about kundalini they know everything but still they cannot believe that we like ordinary people can give realization to them so in no way you should be diffident 
but try to bring them round through somebody else. Because the human nature is such, the one who is living, the one who is existing, they don't want to accept. Whosoever is dead, you see, and written somewhere, anything in black and white, and if you say, in this book this is this written, they'll accept. That's why you have to be knowledgeable. You must read books which are supportive of your Realization, supportive of Sahaja Then only you can talk to them. If you are just having Realization, you can give Realization, you have got vibrations, that won't work out, especially in the Western countries where people are too much here, nothing there. You have to tell them that we are also intelligent enough and we also understand it with our brains and logic what is the truth is. Then after their Realization, of course, is much easier. But if you say, all right, come along, I have to give you Realization, you cannot. You cannot force them, you cannot... They have to ask for it. After all, this is a protocol of the Divine also. The Divine cannot fall at the feet of people, oh, please come and have your Realization, no, that's too much. But there are ways and ways by which you can ask people and work it out. But I must tell you one thing, that all the Sahaja Yogis, before they started, I started Sahaja Yoga in the West and especially in England also, you see, whenever I talk to them, they are very anxious how to get more people into Sahaja how to bring more people, what to do for more people, how to manage. Or they would think somebody to be very mm, spiritual or something. So, Mother, can I bring that fellow? And it would turn out to be a horrid stuff, you see. <laughs> it would burn my hands, it would burn everything. <laughs> I would say, now, how do you mean? What, do, what made you think that is spiritual? Mother, he talks so much of spirituality. That's not a thing. It, ha it is a caliber. Is an inner caliber a person must have. He may be an ordinary person, he may not be earning so much money, he might be on the street, but the inner caliber has to be there. Otherwise, what's the use of breaking your head against a wall? So, this the idea of having more and more is wrong. But to have people who are of that caliber, of that quality and who deserve it. So many do not deserve it. So what to do? You cannot just... It's not like a barber shop that you can uh, make the head uh, dress the way you like. The Sahasrara has to open out. You see, the Kundalini has to come out. It has to work that way. You cannot just say, all right, now you've got Realization. You can't say that way. All the time the Kundalini is falling down, you should say, all right, sorry, sir, I'm sorry. Finished. And the more you show as if you are seeking elections for the votes, the more they'll be worse. If somebody doesn't get Realization, well and good. For example, a lady met me in a place and she said, uh, I want to have Realization. I said, all right. Uh, I'll try. <laughs> then she wrote three letters to me, sent her photographs and she... And then she says, I don't know why you don't write to me. I've been writing to you, this and that. I know it's a difficult task to give a Realization. Oh, so I wrote to her, all right, when I come next in June, you can come along. But there could be somebody who might be of that caliber. You can feel it. You are knowledgeable yourself, you can feel the vibrations, you can feel it and you can then take that person seriously. So work on the people who are simple, who have that caliber. Of course, they could be very much spoilt also because of seeking, but if they are intense and sincere, then the best thing is to work it out with complete assiduity and attention to such a person. 
But if it's a fashion, you see, because they are going to many gurus and they are doing some lots of guru shopping, then you should say there's no shop here. You can't pay. First of all, you can't pay. If they understand that, then it's all right. Say, like one fellow from the BBC came in and uh, he said, we can't believe in a guru who doesn't take any money. I said, then all right, you go to such a guru who takes money from you. I have nothing to say. He said, what did he say? Ag Anglo-Saxon brain. I don't know what that brain is especially, made by God or not. <laughs> Cannot understand anyone who can do such a thing without money. Such a person, if it's all right, thank you very much, I'm sorry, you see, you are beyond me, you are too great, sorry. Not hurting the person, but such ideas, such things, if they have their embrace, you cannot break such a hard nut, can you? And you should not feel sorry for that. For see their vibrations, see their calibre. Calibre is the only way you can judge how much attention needs to be paid what is to be done. For some people it's so obvious, so obvious. And some people go on arguing, arguing with you, but all of them now are good Sahajogis, despite the fact they argued quite a lot with Me to begin with. Now they are very good Sahajogis. But now time has come for you to have a quick result and you will meet people who will be very good. I'm sure you'll meet all of them who are in England and you, you will be able to manage that. Your ways, your methods, your styles will convince them. Today only Dr. Brian West told me that many people are getting interested now in Sahaja Yoga because they can see the change that comes in, the transformation, the uh, confidence, everything that they see. So you should not try to force Sahaja Yoga on anyone, it's better that you see their calibre. Calibre is very easy to make up. You just say it and it is there. They know, yes, that's it. Any other question? Clearly, I didn't hear. Shumatiji, you also didn't hear. Shumatiji, huh? Could you speak about sympathy and compassion towards other Sahaja yogis who have problems with negativity? Ah. Now, sympathy and compassion. Sympathy doesn't get involved, then it's compassion. Sympathy, sim means share. Pathi means pathos. If you want to share the pathos of another person, then you are sympathizing with that person. Now supposing somebody's husband is dead, now that person is crying a lot, now you also go and sit down and cry louder than her. <laughs> then people will ask, is, did your husband die or her husband die? <laughs> no, no, I'm just showing sympathy, you know. This is lip sympathy, of course. Another is maybe the heartfelt sympathy. When it is heartfelt, then you don't cry. Then you develop the opposite force to put that person right. What do you say to that person? You should say, see, now, if you are born, you are going to die, everybody is going to die, that's, that's the system. Now two persons never die together. This gentleman who has died now is your husband, all right, but now if you start crying like this, he won't have any peace, he'll be hovering around you and he might be in limbo waiting for you to come there or something like that. 
So no use crying over him. On the contrary, you should say, I'm all right. Don't worry about me. I'm all right. Get your Realization as I've got it. This is the opposite force that you put. This is a real, real way of uh, helping that person. But the compassion is very different. Compassion just flows. It doesn't say anything. Even you don't see me, even if you are in the hospital, you know I'm with you. It works. Even if you just think of me, it works. Even if you make some mistakes, you know Mother will forgive. That's compassion. Compassion is just flow. You don't talk about it, don't say anything. It just flows and covers you completely. And you enjoy that. That's compassion. It works. Sympathy doesn't work. Compassion works. It suits you. It's a very beautiful touch of love, affection, kindness, protection. And you feel so confident that you are under the protection of the Divine. <coughs> so this compassion has not to be shown or to be uh, dealt with. Now supposing another Sahaja Yogi is having a problem. We have only two problems. As I say, how many turns there are in London, only two, left or right? <laughs> in the same way there are two problems, either left or right. If it is the left one or the right one, you know right one you have to beat with the shoes, that's all finished. You <laughs> don't have to go and say anything to the person if he has right problems. Now if he has the left problem, what do you do? You need not go and talk to that person, you have a bandhan, uh, you can burn the name, you can do what you like. But you need not face the person, you need not tell the person that I'm helping you, I'm trying to do something for you. That's wrong, that's ignorance. You don't have to say that. It just works, it has to work by itself. But I don't tell you that I'm going to help you in any way, do I? Nothing of the kind. Wherever you are, you know I'm with you. All the time. In the same way, this compassion will work whether you are sitting down here, if you are beating somebody with shoes, that person will come round. So there are only two problems, one is the left or the right. If you try to sympathize with any one of them, you are in trouble. So best thing is not to directly help them, but indirectly. not to tell them that you are helping, not even mention it to them. The concern is the point. The concern about a person, your attention should go there, your attention is very active. It's a very powerful thing you have got now, your attention acts. Just put your attention to that person with a concern but no involvement. That is compassion. You have got it. You have got the power of compassion in your attention now. You haven't used it. Without taking any credit for it, without showing it, without uh, confronting it, just inside yourself, you feel it, it will work out. But for that, you have to cleanse your own attention. That's very important. If your attention is loose, tight, if your connection is not all right, then it won't work out. But if you have 
that kind of an attention which is silent, which is witnessing, which is not involved, it's dynamic, it works. All of you have to become like me. I'm sure you all can and achieve that caliber of compassion. All right? Do you follow now? Thank you. Any other question, Hester? Hmm? Dania has any questions? <laughs> you never had them. Anybody else? Jason? None. Question less people, I tell you. Best way is to enjoy others. Best way is to enjoy yours. And to enjoy you yourself is to laugh at yourself. That's the best way. Address yourself. You, Mr. Now, come along. This is ego, I know. <laughs> ah, that's it. That's the word. No, 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 no. Not me. I've had enough of it. That's how you enjoy yourself. And enjoy others seeing their good points. Sweet, sweet things they do, very sweet things. Don't have to say anything. We had seventy-one marriages, you can believe it. And I looked at the brides and they were all looking at me from the angles, you see. And their eyes were telling the story of their love and gratitude. And I don't know what all they said. I was just watching them when they're walking with their garlands in their hands, slowly, slowly. The sweetness, the beauty of their feelings, very slowly they were walking. And then I saw the boy standing there looking at me with tremendous feeling of oneness. You see, this cannot be enjoyed otherwise. Uh, even with the body you cannot enjoy, supposing you rub your hand, you won't enjoy that much as you enjoy uh, other people, other surgeries. And then the friends doing the leg pulling also enjoy. <laughs> the way they talk to each other I enjoy. Everything so enjoyable. It doesn't hurt anyone, it doesn't trouble anyone. You are here to enjoy. God has created this universe for you to enjoy. So only thing is that you must improve your attention. Cleanse your attention by meditation. Always think of good things, not of bad things. You should not react too much, just be within yourself, see for yourself, witness everything. And you'll be amazed, you'll see beautiful points, beautiful things all around. So much of beauty which we are losing because we cannot see it. So that deep penetrating attention of concern will solve all the problems, I'm sure. But open your heart doesn't mean that you go and hug somebody and kiss somebody ten times. It doesn't mean that at all. On the contrary, it can be quite embarrassing, you know. <laughs> Any other question?
I, I had a, a problem there. You see, we, they arranged a program for me to speak to the young uh, president's organization, the presidents of big, big, uh, uh, big, big uh, organizations, business organizations. And I had to speak to them. And uh, one of the lady, of course, I mean, the questions were very good and everything fares over. And later on she says, but I can't believe it because she's not at all serious, you see. <laughs> and I laughed and laughed and laughed with that. I said, now I cannot be serious anymore. I was too much. <laughs> but there's so much joy bubbling out. Why, how can you be serious? This is the idea of a saint that he should be very serious, stern, uh, going out with a stick in his hand all the time, <laughs> hitting everyone on the head. <laughs> So, oh, any other question, Bhakta? No. We must have a hall here, a big hall we should buy somewhere. We should be able to buy. I'm thankful to people who are working on Shudi camp, but I think we must hurry up now. People are coming for Guru Puja. I told them we'll have it in Shudi camp. And otherwise, if it is not ready, we'll have to change the menu. So everybody must go and work it out. I think it's important. We have money, we have no problem on that. We have to have a nice, grand, beautiful uh, a seminar before Guru Puja. <coughs> and there are many coming here. We'll meet all of them. It'll be a very nice time. A real festival we'll be having. So it would be better that you all of you combine together and work it out and uh, also give uh, different work to different people and uh, they should all try to organize it uh, in a beautiful way, that there's no quarrel, nothing. But you'll see people, you see, you'll say, Oh, this is the room I would like to have for my wife, <laughs> things like that. It's all stupidity. This is the glass for me, it's, I can't give it to you. All such stupid things will be there. And uh, I think for such people you should say, you are not for Guru Puja, better not be here. Everybody doesn't deserve to be there. That's you should find out, that what sort of people they are. If they are fighting for all these little, little things, it's best is to tell them that, sorry, we better not come for Guru Puja. So the most important thing is that in Guru Puja we have to receive a special uh, capacity to be a guru ourselves, a special intelligence, a special understanding, a kind of a wisdom which gives you discretion and the ability to argue out things. That will enhance your personality. A beautiful, dignified, personality can be created within yourselves. So for that you have to be there with all that dedication and understanding about yourself. So I'm looking forward to this Guru Puja and uh, everybody has to write. Now for Sastra Day they are working so hard, the people from Australia have printed so many posters all over the world, they have sent it, they have sent it to you also, the posters of Sastra. Have you brought it? No? You haven't shown them. So next time you must show all of them, they should see that, what they have done, how much. And you must, uh, we have no nothing like a news from there and this, but all this can be discussed among yourself and you should know about each other, what's happening where and uh, what Ashram is doing, what is the special work they are doing and uh, what is the new uh, thing they have discovered. All sorts of things you can find out from each other and you can tell others also. This is how you keep in co communication with each other. Oh, there's a very good news that uh, Dr. Uh, Rai, 
who is the dean of the faculty of uh, physiology in Delhi University, started a research work on uh, the comparative study of Sahajogis and others as far as the physiology is concerned. And he's found out that the people who are not Sahajogis have a very uh, low uh, resistance for diseases. The skin, uh, skin resistance is less, and so many things is found out. And uh, he has put it on, he's tabulated the whole thing. And that is being now approved by the government and is now published, uh, going to be published also. In the same way, you see, we are thinking of having a research here done for people in Shudi camp so that we can also publish something like that with the research. That so far, you see, so many have been cured, so many got rid of their addictions, so many got rid of uh, their mental problems, so many things happened. But we haven't yet recorded it, we have not put it properly on the record. Now, this is what we are going to do now. Anybody who has achieved something or has felt better or has been cured or something like that must give it in writing to these people so they record it. Because, you see, in these modern times, they want everything in black and white. So that could be done very well here in England. Another thing I was thinking that now Nirmala Yoga has stopped there because of this problem <coughs> of foreign exchange. So what we can do is to have a Nirmala Yoga published in India and sent here and you can uh, print it here and sell it here so that the foreign exchange problem doesn't come in. Because foreign exchange is such a problem in that country, you have to have a proper uh, a committee, this, that, all headaches. <coughs> so you can sell them here and distribute them here. It's very easy and Paul can help you there. Paul, can't you? Yes. So it's all. We get the Nirmala Yoga done there and just the copy sent here, translated. You can also add to it, you can also put something into it and some things from there and some things from here. You can uh, distribute it to all the centers here and we can start like that. Because uh, they created a big problem out of that last Nirmala Yoga, so I've just stopped it. Because you see, we, we are not very good at human laws, I think. Sometimes we make mistakes and I don't want uh, you people to be caught up into these human laws. So you have to be careful. Uh, we can do it, I think we can do it. And as England is the heart, it has to circulate everything. <coughs> but the hearts must open out. The conditioning is very bad here. You see, that you are told that you should not express your feelings, uh, you should not say anything, you should be very poised, you should not uh, talk about your feelings. That's not so in Sahaja This is the heart and heart must speak, heart must say, uh, you must know how to say that you love others. It's very easy to say, I hate. It's very difficult for people to say, I love you, because they're afraid. The fear that if you commit like this, oh, so you love me, so do this for me. You love me, so do this for me. <laughs> how dare you say you love me? If you have loved me, you must do all this and you must give this. Oh, we had some surgeries like that. They were abusing me also that, you said you love us, then why don't you do this for us? Then it becomes a demanding love. Any other question anywhere? What's happening, John, about your priesthood? <laughs> They are getting quite exposed. Exposure is the only way. But still nothing goes into the heads of the people, they are so egoistical. Nobody wants to accept that it's all exposed now, we they know this is fanaticism, this is nonsense. But still they go on with it, what to do? Beautiful children you have here. Mm. 
How many are new people who are seeing me for the first time? Raise your hands, please. Ah. Ah, you all look little serious. <laughs> <laughs> Still rather serious. Shouldn't be serious at all. Good. Nice. Look at the children. He's just hitting the head. <laughs> Who's the child crying there so much? Whose child? Yes, ma'am. Huh? This, this child? What's the matter? Must be hot. Take out the sweater. Huh? I think it must be hot for the child. And they feel very thirsty also. You see, these are places where uh, you don't have any mm, humidity much. So they feel very thirsty also in such places, I think. All of them cry the same, whether they are Indians, English, anything. <laughs> From their crying you can't make out what uh, race they come from. <laughs> now better. Have you got some water or something? See? You must understand your children, they won't cry without a reason. They are all realized souls. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anything else? Can you say? How, how can you best cope if you have to work in a negative situation? In your office? Job. Yes. Uh, negativity in the office? Yes, you might. You see, uh, all the negativity have also has also an aspect which I call is ridiculous and humorous. So anybody who is negative or anything, you watch it, see for yourself, don't get involved. Just see which part it is, it is ridiculous or it is humorous. <laughs> <laughs> then you won't be serious about it. Sahaja Yogis have a sense of ridicule. You see, they understand what is ridiculous. Is. Also they understand what is humorous or what is stupid. So just see that, it is stupid, all right, let it, doesn't matter, what can you do? <coughs> These children are growing so fast, you know. They're so becoming all tall girls and all that, I'm just trying to make them out one after another. <laughs> 